Okay, so this is the next morning. And we've started pouring off the glycerol. I'll show you how that comes out. There we are. It's pretty dark. It's fairly runny. I guess with uh, if you use KO, KOH, it's always going to be this runny. If you use NaOH as your catalyst, it won't be this runny. So, and the level we started at was right at the edge there, and it's we're down to there now. 13 and a half gallons of glycerol, and about 44 and a half gallons of fuel. That's what it looks like. So this is unwashed biodiesel. You can see the light through there. It's a little darker than the virgin oil that we used. But uh, the smell is similar, like uh, green apples, I guess. Maybe that's the methanol, I don't know. So we got about 45 gallons of fuel to work with that we're going to wash and clean. And uh, hopefully we're left with about 44 or more in the finished product. So we're using the water heater to run on a hose here. This is our wash water. Then we've got a half a gallon per minute nozzle on here. So we're going to pump that into the top of our tank now. Wash our diesel. Be able to see it build up in the bottom after a few minutes, but it's only half a gallon per minute, so we get 10 gallons of water, 20 minutes. But it's a really fine spray, so this is ideal. Here's the first wash water coming out and you can see it's pretty darn milky and foamy. So we're still draining the wash water. The, the level is about right there right now. It's probably hard to see on film. <coughs> Anyhow, this is the wash water here and we're going to stick the pH probe in there and see how bad it gets. As you can see, it's pretty bad. 11.32 11 initially. Well, 11.3. So that that's really alkaline, so there's quite a bit of KOH coming out in there. And uh, we'll need to do more than just one water wash, which is obvious with biodiesel, but it uh, gives you an idea, and we'll measure the pH as we go in the next wash waters. So this is quite interesting. I got this uh, graduated cylinder here. It's plastic. It's one liter up to there. And this, uh, the contents of this is basically the last of the glycerol, um, the last bit that's coming out of the processor. When you drain most of the glycerol, you'll get the last bit that contains a bit of the fuel and a bit of the glycerol. The whole thing actually looks brown as it comes out. So this is really interesting to see the separation because you're always going to get a really good separation in a tall, thin cylinder. So. This is actually biodiesel that we're going to pour back into the system and then get rid of the glycerol. So, kind of neat. So this is about the third or fourth wash. And uh, it's pretty milky on top. Started bubbling it to clear it up a bit. So, uh, we'll see what happens. So here we are at roughly the fifth wash. And you can see there's a bunch of foam on top still. 
And we've got this layer of foamy stuff, and then this layer of semi-clear. And then from here, all the way down to there, is this yellow slimy stuff. So hopefully this is going to clear up with the water bubbling. I'm just going to let it go overnight and uh, see what happens. Well, this is what we have after a day of settling. There's a bit of biodiesel liquid, but for the most part, it's this slimy goo stuff which is the infamous biodiesel emulsion and hopefully what I'm about to show you in a few minutes is going to fix this in a short amount of time so first time for me cross our fingers so what we have here is some hot water five gallon pail and I'm going to put in this 1.36 kilos of coarse salt Give it a little stir, get that all pretty hot, mixed in there. It's a lot of salt. Okay, so once that's full, we're going to give another quick mix with a stick and then it's going to go into the processor. And what I've read is you basically chuck it in really fast and get it mixing. And then uh, just let it sit and some kind of miracle is supposed to happen. All right, here we go. We've got 1.36 kilos and a, of uh, coarse salt and a five gallon pail. And I'm gonna turn on the air bubbler. And we'll see what happens here. Cross your fingers. Looks better. We'll see. They say if it doesn't work the first time, add more salt and water. Well, the water oil separation has become a lot more distinct. Uh, the liquid itself is a lot thinner. It's not as thick as it was before. It's still kind of opaque, but uh, I've got the bubbler in the very bottom, so it's bubbling the salt water through, so I'll probably let that go for uh, I don't know, half an hour or so and see where we're at. I'm gonna try another trick here. I just drained some of the salty water out of the bottom and I'm gonna pour it back in the top here. Get another mix on it. Nothing like being aggressive with salt water, you know? Can't be bad for it. Okay, so this has been going for, I'm gonna guess, half an hour, 45 minutes with the bubbler at the very bottom. I just had the light on the bottom here. Let me just pull it off so you can see what's going on. See how clear that is in the bottom? It's a really excellent separation. And what we have in the top is, voila, semi-clear biodiesel. So we got very little bubbling. Um, I guess I'm gonna take another chance with another uh, bubble wash or another uh, water wash on it and see where that goes but the bottom here is definitely ready for draining so I may just leave it and start drying it with the heaters and the bubbler and see what we get from there. Now this is a salt wash water coming out. It is quite clean 
There's not a lot of impurities in here. I don't know how the pH meter is going to do in this stuff. Take a look here quick. Uh, well, that's definitely a marked improvement. 9.3, it's slowly going up, but that's definitely not 11 point something anymore. So that's a good sign. I don't know how the salt affects it. It probably increases the reading, I suppose. So I don't know if you can see this. It looks pretty cool. For real, you can see stuff just the moisture just coming down here, dropping out of the biodiesel. And literally, I just drained this all the way out. And all this uh, water you see coming down is filling up the bottom. So there's still tons of water dropping out of the biodiesel, even though I've taken the bubbler out of the bottom. I've now moved the bubbler up to about here. And uh, it's still dropping water out so unfortunately we're gonna we're down to 44 gallons total now so we have lost a bit and it was probably with the the wash water that we were washing before uh, but uh, we have to keep in mind for the next batch of biodiesel to use salt in the first wash and uh, then we don't have any soap issues and we probably get a higher yield out of it as well you can see it's really clearing up now we're gonna let this bubble overnight with the heaters on to clear it up to crystal clear. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys is that output valve that comes out the front here and I've added this filter that I had lying around. It's basically a whole house filter and I'm going to throw an element in here. You have to be careful there's uh, certain kinds of elements that probably aren't good for biodiesel. The ones that are made out of uh, foam type plastic foam material, styrofoam. Uh, but they do make ones that's like a spun um, spun yarn or whatever or uh, string and uh, I'm going to use one of those and that will be my final filtration to output here once this fuel's done and we go into jerry cans or the vehicle or whatever so you want to have some sort of final filtration on there to catch any bits.